All right, so this is gonna be the first one in the series of videos about what it means for uh, something to be an F SHTF vegetable. What does that mean for growing for SHTF? What is SHTF? Well, I'm sure you know what the acronym is. And there's all kinds of different scenarios that you could find yourself in that might qualify. So as your SHTF garden, preparing for the apocalypse the asteroid comes back and down to the ground and boom we're all going the way of the dinosaurs and the few survivors that are out there have to live off the land in that case you probably want to get your hands on any kind of vegetable you could any kind of fertilizer any kind of anything um organic stuff would probably be right out the window does shtf mean yeah the prices are getting kind of high in the store and you want to mitigate that by um, growing some of the food yourself the way your grocery bill is not as high. Does it mean maybe you have a restricted diet and organic food here, again, it's expensive? Or you get into juicing and you like to do juice when it comes to, uh, you know, juice fasting and all that, and that's very expensive. Maybe you like to grow varieties that are, uh, you know, experience some new flavors that you can't find in the store. There's all kinds of reasons people may choose what their situation is this profile for the cabbage we're going to uh try to put some numerical values on these try and approach this a little bit more analytic so this particular cabbage i've been zoomed in on here during my talk has been overwintered and we're talking about how easy it is to grow it's very easy to grow so on a scale of one to ten i would probably give it a seven or eight i mean it's it's easy to grow you put some seeds in here, like I put the seeds in these little seed trays, and you know, I didn't even put use a heat mat, I didn't do anything special, I had them in my little greenhouse, and they came up. I thinned a few of them out, and there we are. Same thing with the one back there, growing some different cells. These started off the same way in the fall, that transplanted them out. So I would give it easy to grow. Um, as far as climate goes, they're cold tolerant, not as cold tolerant as kale or something like that. If kale was a 10 and say tomatoes were a one, I would probably give them about a seven. They're not the most cold tolerant, but they're cold tolerant than average. Productivity per square foot. That's a hard one to measure. Because when you get a cabbage head, you get this big giant cabbage head. Like this right here is not a huge one because it's grown over the winter and that one's a little bit smaller. But you can get, you know, some, that's probably two or three pounds. So I have, you know, several pounds here. I could go make some cabbage soup. I could make some wraps. Productivity, but there's also another, another factor when it comes to this. Now, when I used to grow cabbage just in my garden and eat it, I didn't even bother growing it for the heads. I had two cabbage plants in my raised bed now we just come out here and just cut me a few leaves off here and there and with all these i could just go cut two leaves off each one and go make me some steamed cabbage as a side dish not harm the cabbage and just let them grow and i was growing in the deep south not far from the gulf of mexico so it was in zone nine and these cabbages held up to uh the cabbage plant held up to uh, the heat just fine in the summer. Didn't have any problems with it. That's, and that's what I would do. Now I'm in the Midwest, it gets much colder, obviously. And uh, with some protection, which I, if anybody see my previous videos, it was, I had a hoop um, house over this that I took down earlier. And it was able to survive with no heat, just the uh, hoop house plastic and PVC frame over the winter, even getting down to single digits. So the range of tolerances for this cabbage is very high. We're talking about calorie dense. If we had to give it a, a um, number for that, I'd probably go a little higher than average because some, if you look at potatoes or beans as like a, the top of the list, something like lettuce at the bottom, like a one for lettuce, this is probably like a six, maybe seven, because they're not a huge amount of calories per cup. I mean, you're talking 60-ish 
I think it was when I looked it up, calories per cup of diced up cabbage. I think it was less than that if it was shredded. So it depends how much um, you're able to get in there, but you're able to get a pretty hearty meal out of it. So anywhere from 30 to 60, I think, calories, depending on how it was prepared. If it was steamed and cooked and all wilted down and jammed in that cup. So you'd need a lot of cups of cooked cabbage if that was your, ent your entire meal. But it's, it's more calories than you get somewhere else. It is hearty enough for, to make a soup stock out of and things like that for cabbage soup, which is delicious. It's nutrient dense. I'd probably give it a pretty good rating for nutrient dense too. Give it like another seven. So to me, cabbage is starting to add up to be a very good SHTF crop if you're growing for self-sufficiency or to, you know, reduce your, your grocery bill if it's cabbage is something that you eat. Let's look at some of the downsides. Some of the ones it's not going to score so high on. Pest tolerance. I don't really have a, never really seen a problem with diseases for cabbage per se, but they're very prone to pests. Let me get a little closer over here to this one. This one's the oldest one I have in the bed. I grew it all spring. You can see it's gotten so eaten up, it's trying to put some of the little heads on. Or maybe this is where the seeds are going to come out of, possibly. This new growth here. But the old growth was just eaten alive by insects. It's very prone to insect damage. These look fairly good because they're in a hoop house and it's been cold. If this was right in the middle of summer of growing this, it would be it would be a constant struggle to keep that little white butterfly. Everybody hates so much. Even though it's very pretty flying around the garden. It's very damaging. Drops off those caterpillars. And um, they love cabbage. They love all brassicas. So that's something I would definitely give it a much lower score. Maybe like a three, two on, on pests tolerance. So that's definitely a low one. Saving seeds. How easy is it to save seeds so you can get more cabbage? That's another one I would give it a very low score on. Because I'll get a ton of seeds once I let some go to seed, but they're biannual plants, so they seed every, you know they they live two years. So you'll plant this. If I, these are overwintered, so maybe they would go to seed. I'm hoping I'm gonna try one in the back to see how long they have to go. They need to be as old as that plant, or can some of these other ones I planted towards the end of the year last year overwintered and out spring? Will they also go to seed, or do they need to have grown through the summer as well? That's something I'm going to find out. Can you get your biennial seeds by playing them at the end of the year, protecting them, and then uh, get them into the seeds in the spring? Or do you have to plant them like these? Nice and new, grow all summer, be all winter, and then go back in the spring again to get seeds. That's generally how it works. Biennial plants to seed after, on their second year. Because of that, you have to plan ahead for seeds. As long as you can go to the store, you can buy cabbage seeds at the Dollar Tree, 25 cents a pack. Seeds are super tiny, you get a ton of them. So I would stock up on things that are best biennial plants and put those in your seed stores. I'm sure every gardener's got a box of seeds, packets, you know, from previous years and they're piled up. Definitely would save brassicas, onions. Um, and brassicas is a group of, of uh, plants which cabbage belongs to the cabbage broccoli brussels sprouts th those type of things kale which we'll eventually do a profile on that one as well that one is also a biannual plant so you only get kale seeds after two years so seed saving it definitely is a low score i think for biennials in general because of the long time it takes to get the seeds now, see what other stuff came about drought tolerance and stuff never really noticed whether it was particularly drought tolerant or not they seem to do well regardless if it rains or doesn't rain so i would just probably give them a five just because it's in the middle and never really had much of a problem with it so they would indicate they probably have some tolerance but i don't know how tolerant so i don't want to give them a super high score on that without you know better information so that's kind of where they're looking at this profile now what kind of just noteworthy stuff that they have the one noteworthy thing is you can take these like other like the collard greens you can cut this head off in there but if you leave the stems in the ground 
it will grow. You won't get another cabbage head, but it'll continue. It'll start putting leaves back on. And if um, you do that, you can at least still go and pick the leaves and steam them up, like I discussed earlier. Another thing about SHTF growing when it comes to varieties of plants. Now, I brought this one out here, this Red Express cabbage. This is show a little bit different. This is just a standard cabbage. Cabbage seeds I uh, got from Dollar Tree, most likely, and just planted them. Same thing with that one. And that's just going to make a standard ca uh, cabbage. These are going to make a red cabbage. And what, why did I pick these Red Express cabbage? What advantage does this have? This one may not have. So we discussed all the things about this cabbage in general that might apply for an SHTF situation. Now, what about this variant here? We have this variety. What? Why would, might you want to choose something like this? All right, Red Express cabbage. For one, it's red, so it has phytonutrients and things like that. So maybe you want to grow up for a new, uh, slightly different nutrient profile. But the main reason why you'd want something like this over the other one is because the climate they grow in. These make smaller cabbages than those, um, two to three pound heads. So probably about the size these actually are because these are smaller from winter time growing. But these make smaller heads and they mature faster. These are specifically bred for a Northern climate. So if you live in Northern United States or Canada, then this right here might be something that you would want to be interested in even more so than standard cabbage. Because this one, having been going for that, it grows fast. It's small, compact little heads, and that you can get um, small. I wanted to have try them out, not because I can't grow regular cabbage, but for one, um, I'm hoping to get more plants in the same space. So that's another reason why to pick a different variant. Also, want to try and see if it has a flavor. I've never tried this, so I want to see if it has a different flavor. But there's other there's other variants that you can get to carve out for specifics. So you can have this one, which you can't even really tell is a cabbage at this point because it's too young, and same with these. And you can get something like that that's obvious, which brings me to my final point about the SHTF thing. How stealthy is this? If you were to be growing this and relying on some of this for your food or to supplement food stock that you already have or garden just because it's expensive in the store or something along those lines, you don't want people to get in your produce normal circumstances it's not really a problem but if that's a concern you know because of some kind of hardship befalls the area or the world or whatever the case may be how stealthy is cabbage not very i give it a low score on that everybody knows what cabbage looks like in the store everybody uh can recognize that this one may be slightly off but you can still find red cabbages everywhere as a small plant like this it's not so obvious but once it matures, so if you grew a bunch of small plants just to pick leaves off of and add them to your salads, that would be a you could get a more you can get a higher stealth value out of that than you could. Of course, this isn't a cabbage; it just happens to be in the shot. It's, uh, it's a spinach, it's also overwintered. So when you look at that kind of stuff, that that's kind of where I'm thinking about that. So I think overall it scores well. It does have a few drawbacks. Stealth is one of them. Um, quick anecdotal story about that when it comes to stealth in general because you have to try and figure out what people recognize from the store I think would be a reasonable place to start obviously people who've gardened um, know a wider range of plants when they look like when they're growing but I was at work one time and uh, some of the some of my co-workers wanted me to bring in some green tomatoes so they can make fried green tomatoes and one of my other co-workers asked what kind of tomato grew green tomatoes they did not know that they start off that way and then change colors as they mature most of them you know, everybody sees are red obviously there's other colors but my co-worker did not know that and another co-worker was talking about my collard greens not the ones i just grew but like previous years and um he said he didn't know what a collard green looked like because he only ever seen them in a can so, particularly, I think collard greens, we do a profile about those, that's going to be more stealthy than, than cabbage. Because you think about the way the average person sees them. The average person sees this, when they go to the store, this is what they see, and they buy it. 
They don't see it looking like this or like this. They see it looking like this. So that right there detracts from the stealth aspect of it. Um, I think if it were to be a major problem, more people will become familiar with it. But anybody who's ever grown it would know exactly what it looks like. And so that, that right there is a little anecdotal story about stealth. That even though it's obvious to you, if you've grown something before, it may not be super obvious to everybody else. Right now, this is pretty obvious because not only does it look like a cabbage, but it's in a raised garden bed. This is in a pot. So where it's at, I think, also makes a big difference. If you were to be walking through the woods and find that, even if it looks like a cabbage, you may be wary of eating it because it could be some toxic plant that looks like a cabbage. And so you wouldn't necessarily want to just grab that and harvest it and eat it. You'd be very wary of something like that. So location also makes a big deal out of that. But for purposes of this conversation, it's going to be... Um, the plant itself as opposed to its surroundings. That's not very stealthy. Everybody knows what that looks like. So I'd give it, I mean, you know, two or three or one or whatever on stealth. I think tomato is probably the most recognized, most garden, most familiar uh, vegetable, or maybe technically a fruit. And uh, so that would probably put that as a one. So maybe this could be a one or a two, because this is pretty recognizable too. But anyway, that sums up my pro, my profile on the cabbage as an SHTF food. I think it scores well in those categories. It's it is hardier than a lot of vegetables. It does have many uses in the kitchen. That's another category we could throw in there. It does do that. It uh, does produce a fair amount per square foot. I mean, it does take a lot of space up because these plants can get pretty big, a lot bigger than these. Um, but you can also pick leaves and continue to harvest throughout the time if you need to throughout the growing season uh, or in the cooler time temperatures because it does survive free a light freeze or with protection that can survive a pretty hard freeze um, downsides it does take two years to get seeds it is insect prone but overall I think the cabbage scores pretty well and since I've grown two different climates I can't say I've grown all of them obviously I've never grown in the desert uh, southwest or anything like that but in the south and in the north um, cabbage has, has been a winner in both of those type of climates. So for me, I think cabbage is worth it. Oh, there's one important category I forgot to mention. My list here, storage. Cabbage stores better than average. Let's go ahead and talk about that. So you can dehydrate cabbage. You can can cabbage. You can do what most people think of whenever they think about storing it long term and make sauerkraut out of cabbage. But just taking this cabbage here, if I chop this cab head of cabbage off, throw it in a Walmart bag, some store bag or something, and throw it in the refrigerator or the freezer with nothing else, it will store for a while. Now, it's going to look super nasty on the outside after a while of being in the fridge, but because it's so many layers, what you do is you do just like you would right out of the garden. You would rip off the outside layers. You'd cut the core out, and you'd peel off the outside layers. The longer it's in the fridge, or, uh, the more layers you may have to take off. But a good sized cabbage, because it's got so many layers, will last a while because you can keep peeling off. When you go to eat it, you just peel off the bad layers on the outside. So it's, it does store for a while just in the fridge or the freezer. Um, if you're willing to do that, especially the freezer, obviously when you have to take it out, thaw it, and then peel the nasty layers off the outside and to get to the good cabbage on the inside. Longer term storage will certainly be um, dehydrating it but most likely probably made in the sauerkraut or just simply diced up, thrown in a canning jar and canned. Now, the canning stuff on there, it's gonna be a whole other topic with that because um, some vegetables are not recommended to be canned. I think cabbage might even be one of them that is not recommended to be canned. You can buy it already canned so you know it's cannibal, but I believe if you look it up um, that it's not recommended to be canned. But it can be done and you certainly can uh, make sauerkraut so that's about it for this profile so let's go ahead and profile other vegetables as we go through the garden season that's what my initial impressions are maybe those numbers might change maybe some people in the comments will have different opinions about the viability of cabbage as an shtf food maybe some other variants like these this is different varieties maybe some of these might be better in your garden 
than a standard cabbage something like this maybe you're in a far north area and you need that faster growth and a smaller size because it's not gonna have enough growing season to get bigger maybe uh, you don't and you can grow these this kind so each individual situation is gonna be a little different but that's to throw it out there instead of just saying the top five vegetables I would pick this series is going to discuss each individual vegetable and what the pluses and minuses are, pros and cons, about that particular one in your particular area. Like cabbage, seems to work fine. If I still was down in the south, I probably wouldn't put peas on my list of things to grow. But up here they are, because it's a much cooler climate, as opposed to being summer nine months out of the year down there. But that's it. If you like, share, subscribe. Leave some comments. We can start this discussion off about what do you think of cabbage as a shtf food do you agree with the numbers that i threw out there or do you think that they should be something different do you think the categories could use a little tweaking but there we go and we're going to carry on with this and we'll do some more different types of vegetables and have those discussions later on thanks have a good day